Great. Rising Unblinded, how are you? And welcome to Trajectory Tuesday. My name is Fernando, and thank you for all of you for being um, here at an Unblinded Huddle, which is the number one place to start your day with a daily dose of integrity-based human influence. To our Unblinded team, if you can please support an unmuting Sean, uh, our two hosts here, please support us in unmuting Sean so we can kick it in. And welcome, everyone. We're excited to have you here. And Sean, what is happening with you as we're here in Utah at 6.30 in the morning, our time? Yeah, so what is present for me is emotion, gratitude, heart. Um, I felt grateful for the opportunity to travel um, for the first time in, from New Jersey uh, in the U.S., an epicenter of the pandemic. And to um, so there's gratitude as I went to JFK Airport in New York. And there was also deep emotion and sadness um, where what was present for me was the emptiness of the airport, the surreal, the surrealness of all the restaurants that were closed, uh, the surrealness of how few people were there, um, the difficulty wearing a mask and you know having a mask on pretty consistently for eight straight hours of travel. Uh, maybe it was more like ten straight hours of travel because we had a connecting flight because for you know it was the only time we could fit in everything. So. I am present to those realities, and I'm also, um, you know, present again to gratitude for you being here, all of you, for us starting our day together, for us doing good together, adding more value together, and having more. So, if, like the two threes, the first three is do good, one, add more massive value from our heart and love, and three is to receive more and more what? More financial abundance, to receive and provide more financial abundance, time and scale and magic. So that's what I'm present to and with gratitude on this trajectory Tuesday. I'm losing track of days. I was like hesitant, but is it Tuesday? Um, and I'm also present to what we're here for. And Fernando, if you could share from your heart um, what you experienced with the, the beautiful things going on with ecosystem merging incredible people and what you enjoyed and um, present to you last night. So last night, um, first of all, I see it in the chat. We're here in Utah because of Courtney Epps and her ability to truly merge superheroes. Um, and to answer Sean's question, yesterday we were invited to by Courtney, to um, who's also part of, you know, Team Thunders, uh, you know, blessed to have her be part of, you know, my 10 by 10. Um, she invited us to a private screening of Sound of Freedom, which is the new movie representing Operation Underground Railroad. And as I was sitting there with Garrett, um, you know, one after, you know, after watching the movie, um, I can sit here and cry all over again about, you know, what that does to me as a man who hopes God blesses him with the opportunity to have a family one day. Um, it's scary what's happening in the world. It reminds us that getting unfollowed on Instagram is definitely not the end of the world. And the point to Sean is uh, it was an example of an ecosystem merger that Operation Underground Railroad has done exceptionally well. And I'll get into Courtney in a second. Um, but Tim Ballard was there. Some of his team were there. They had 100 people in a you know, private movie theater watching this movie in which he then went up after with a microphone, which is considered a microphone in a stage, ecosystem mergers, influencers influencing influencers to merge ecosystems to make the world a greater place, aka save children from sexual slavery. And that was present. And it was a beautiful example of it. And Courtney, you know, was there sitting front row with, you know, her entire basketball team of a family. She literally had like seven people there, um, all her family and also some of her members of her 10 by 10. And she intentionally sat in the front and everyone was asking questions, raising hands. Courtney asked hers, began to cry. We went through. She got the opportunity to ask a second question. And, and this is when, you know, my love for Courtney is just, she's an example of this formula, uh, even though. She is a student of the formula. She's been doing it her whole life, didn't realize it was the formula. She like got the microphone and started sharing about, you know, what we're gonna be doing today, which is, you know, teaching profits and nonprofits about the world of social giving, um, giving from total net income versus uh, net profits. And she has graciously invited Unblinded as she is teaching them how to save money and teaching companies how to give more. We are teaching companies and people how to make more money and less time with more magic. So it's a beautiful ecosystem merger. And what she did, is she began to talk and then she's like, hey, like boldly in her Zeus loving energy, hey, can I just get the mic? And Tim like gave her the mic and she goes, oh my God, Courtney, I didn't even recognize it was you. I'm so sorry. I met you at Tony Robbins' birthday. Thank you for giving, ba 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 ba, rose her identity. 
as she began to walk down, she's like, hey, I'm only going to take, you know, three minutes, which was more like seven, all beautiful. She was very able to build rapport with Tim and John uh, very quickly. She was able to share her heroic unique identity and how she's feeding 200,000 kids a month, um, took her company from 7,500 to $270,000 of revenue a month through social giving and then stepped into agreement formation, which is, yeah, that's why I'm here. And this is what we're doing tomorrow. We're teaching profits and nonprofits about social giving and how they can all get what they want because pro um, profit companies are really good at making money. Nonprofits are really good at saving the world. And she believed we should all work together. And it was a beautiful example of being in the formula, conveying identity, um, understanding what Sean would call a privilege window and stepping in and in front of these hundred people, sharing her identity, what she's done, everyone clapped um, in loving energy and mission accomplished. Her identity rose. She connected profits and nonprofits. Today, more people are gonna know who she was because she was on stage. And by the way, she also talked about her company without ever mentioning it, without ever saying OTV tax. She talked about tax strategy and things. I am very confident that the curiosity of the hundred people in the room, because I saw it afterwards where, Courtney, where are you from? Courtney, tell us more about like this tax strategy thing. I'm not confused that Courtney will have business out of that. And that's not bad because she did it with integrity. She did it to support Operation Underground Railroad first, the nonprofit second, the people there third, and oh yeah, herself. And that's totally cool because that's in integrity. Um, and it's just a beautiful example of ecosystem merging. We Unblinded couldn't have been there without the 10 by 10, even though I had a relationship with Courtney for over a year and a half. It, what, if, it, if I did not draft her, if we did not have our meetings, if we did not have the proximity and conversations of our, your six data points, we would not be in Utah. Sean wouldn't have flown here. We would have been in a private screening. We wouldn't have the opportunity to do a real raw live in front of all these people, which is the best way to show that influence is a superpower. Point of all this, the formula works, ecosystem merging stage and microphone, and the 10 by 10 structure, which is a freedom structure, was the catalyst to all of this happening in two weeks. Without it, it would have taken me two years. Back to you, Sean. Yeah, and so thank you for that, Fernando. Beautiful, and, and thank you to Courtney. And you know, these what, what we're supporting through the ten by ten and the railroad opens is the compression of time and the magic of things. You know, I was saying this on the, the Master Huddle this morning, and I. On Trajectory Tuesday, um, it is so important to be in your heart, to love yourself, to ask yourself this question. Do I love myself enough, like Courtney did, to, and, and, and who do I identify myself as, to have taken the microphone in front of that group in service of the room? And knowing you're going to add value and knowing that one, two, five, eight, ten people might have rolled their eyes in the beginning and said, look at this person taking the microphone and walking up here. Do you love your people enough? Do you love your mission enough? Do you love the people in your ecosystem enough to risk the judgment of others? Like, let that be the message of this Trajectory Tuesday. Because if, if you don't love yourself enough, love your ecosystem enough, love the people in your 10 by 10 enough, and I'm gonna go hard and clear, and your family enough. Do you love those things enough? Or are you gonna let your self-focused, self-interested fear of rejection and failure win? Which to me, is unbelievably selfish and I've been selfish I've been selfish a bunch I have feared judgment often in my life I still feel fear judgment when we did the immersion I got a call from somebody who's like yeah people in like Tony Robbins organization are saying like you're copying things I went nuts I was furious I was irate. I said, what things, what effing things? And I got, I started calling people on the phone. I was so angry. At the end of it, it was like all good, but there was fear there. There was like that statement. I was irate. 
right? Because I have so carefully cultivated my entire life to acknowledge source of things and to create my own content from what I learned through high school athletics, through coming out of the locker room to born to be wild in the high state of physiology with coach Woods, who was here running, sprinting, yelling, screaming, jumping. Like I was doing all that stuff as an athlete always. So when I heard that it was, it was crazy, but here's the point. The point is I love myself enough to risk it because well-intentioned, well-meaning people don't know my heart and don't know my background and don't know where everything comes from. And People also don't realize that every single person who has learned has learned certain things from another. See Tony Robbins, Jim Rohn, see Tony Robbins, NLP that became NAC, right? And I hold no judgment. Like these are just like facts and reality. And so when, you know, it's like, yeah, because people are like yelling and screaming that equals somebody else's property. Like, are you kidding? Like, have you been to an NFL game? Have you been to a concert? And have you been to my high school gym in Emerson that literally invented, at least in Bergen County, but they didn't even invent it in Bergen County because they copied it. I asked Coach Woods from a school they wrestled somewhere else, the idea of running out of the locker room to music. But the point is, do we love ourselves, our family, our ecosystem? our vision, our mission enough to realize that we are going to be judged by others. Falsely, we're going to be misportrayed. People are going to say, somebody there last night said, when they went home, all those beautiful things about Courtney and somebody else said, like, who does she think she is? Grabbing the microphone. I know what she was doing. Somebody, I guarantee you, said that. And do you want to know who the first person to say it was? The person who is selfish and scared and who wishes they had the courage to do what Courtney had the courage to do, to step into her greatness. And because they're scared, they made up a reason they did it. And the reason they made up is, well, I was just being polite. It wasn't my place to do that. Fernando, did Courtney make last night better? Did did she add no value, some value, or a lot of value or harm? I would vote a lot of value. Yeah. And even if it was between some and a lot, I I know it was a lot. But even even if it was because she added the concept of people seeing how to give more to Operation Underground Railroad. Mm -hmm. She seeded the reality to do that by the idea of net income giving, uh, I'm sorry, net gross giving, not net net giving. Thank you. Right? So she seeded those concepts. She seeded the concept of how to model what Operation Underground Railroad has done with Tony Robbins, what other major charities have done with other major people or corporations of influence. They've merged ecosystems. And that concept being present will help people not even in the room because it's helping me think even more about the American Foundation for the Blind and what we're doing together and how we could do more together and who else can do more with the AFB and who else could do more with other charities and causes, AKA the 10 by 10 having the sixth category be contribution given, right? So the connection, what I want to, what, my desire on the trajectory Tuesday is to really leave with two lessons. One is do you love yourself enough and love all the things around you enough to confront and putting that at stake, your love and you not fulfilling on what you have set out to fulfill on for yourself and for those others that you love, including humanity. Do you, you want to risk that and have that overwhelmed by your own fear of the judgment of others and what you would perceive to be the rejection of others? Or are you ready to step into the reality that you can't be judged or rejected? Like they could say things, but it doesn't have to equal judgment. You don't have to accept it. 
Like you didn't step into that reality. Are you prepared to leverage your pain of losing out and not supporting those things that you love to leverage that to overcome the other side of it, that fear that you have inside of rejection and failure that don't even exist in the first place. Okay. So that's present to me. And the second piece is to connect math, speed, integrity, and love, like heart-centered love, like heart-centered love and speed and integrity and math. Like they all fit together. Like going fast equals bringing about more love and impact more rapidly. Going fast doesn't have to equal integrity breach. Going fast after building emotional rapport doesn't have to mean that emotional rapport wasn't legitimate. Like going fast can also equal making mistakes and errors for sure. But making mistakes and errors and perfection is like the antithesis of perfectionism and you're going to make them. And making mistakes doesn't equal the absence of love. Being brave enough to make mistakes can equal extraordinary love and giving and contribution. The ability to be vulnerable, the ability to show your weaknesses, the ability to call people and ask and talk and build a relationship and hear no and step into your truth and greatness and risk in the beginning, creating a little bit of friction because your mastery skills and influence aren't quite there yet, as opposed to avoiding how to deal with an irrational, illogical, emotionally based objection. Like, do you love enough to say something? I was on a beautiful, um, Dr. Michelle Gamble did a beautiful, real raw open yesterday. And everybody loved each other enough to tell the truth. And I, my, I couldn't see everybody that was there, but my belief is that I'd love to have Dr. Gamble on a huddle another day this week. My belief is that everybody there was African-American from the, from them sharing at the beginning, Dr. Gamble and Dr. Cap, uh, Captain Giles, I should say. And we talked about some things that are going on that are horrific and systemic. And everybody loved each other enough also to give real feedback and to open up access of influence because if influence doesn't rise and if, if Martin Luther King um, didn't have the ability to influence the way he did, many things that occurred because of his and the work of many folks in the 1960s in America, many, many things that occurred would not have occurred. So unlocking influence and telling one another the truth and being brave enough to ask, being brave enough to learn there's four steps, 10 indispensable elements and four energies, and to realize that the way that you communicate and influence isn't innate, it isn't genetic, it isn't a part of who you are fundamentally, so therefore growing it and shifting it and expanding it isn't anything but an act of love for yourself, your mission, your dreams, all of those that you love and your ecosystem. And doing it with passion and speed, like an athlete on the field or like a beautiful voice on a stage that is relentlessly improving in the practice room, that is urgent, that is caring, that is in their heart and soul, but urgently working to get better that it disrupts things and you know that's not it. Breathing and different note and again and again and again and again. Which is if you read Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell is how the Beatles became the Beatles. You go, well, the Beatles are just like gifted singers and it was John Lennon lying in bed with long hair and singing about the summer of love. Well, the way he got there is also in part because the Beatles played an insane and extraordinary number of shows for years when they were coming up together. And they honed their skills. 
and they argued and they fought in the practice room as they got better. And they innovated after they went on stage and people thought they weren't very good. And they worked and worked and became masters. And then they had long hair and then they did like sit-ins and love-ins and then they impacted the world and were cool. But first, first, they were people going hard and fast from their heart to build and create something, to unlock the magic inside of them and the collective magic together. Like that's what was happening. So do you have a comment on those two? So the two breakthroughs today we're seeking, the, the, the outcomes of Strike Through Tuesday, are first, do we love? Like, how do we use love to overcome our fear that's halting us and stopping us from delivering our mission and dreams and advancing for all those that we care about and love, which hopefully is the entire world, or at least the immediate people around us? And second, how do we integrate love and heart, integrity, speed, and math? Because it is in the counting of things that we grow. What we don't measure, what we don't monitor doesn't grow. And it is symbiotic to measure things and love. And when, in a personal experience as a Fernando, you know, Chaz, if we can work on um, anybody that wants to come up, who has a question, comment, wants to join, please allow, support. What was present for me, and I've shared it before, I'll say it again, as I hugged my two brothers, Chris and Chris, not biological brothers, but brothers in heart and passion and intensity, brothers and in hitting each other hard in the practice field and running and sprinting since we were 14 years old during a summer where we were scared kids meeting Coach Slezak to the nights that we sat in the woods and we cut our hands open, true story, and became literal blood brothers in the woods as we were cold and talking around the fire in the off season, having a beer at 16 years old. We talked about our dreams, just like as though it was the, the future was forever, just two years away of being seniors and beating Hasbro Heights under the lights and doing all that together and adding to the legacy of our high school and just giving. And we hugged and wept as students who were proud, connected, seeing us as examples of possibility, broke down the wooden fence at Hasbro Heights. And for the first time in eight years in Emerson of a proud tradition of a small town where much of the town closed on a Saturday to come watch the football game we gave people back their heart, their pride, legacy, inspired younger generations, had people hugging and crying and jumping on the field and we wept saying we did it. And we did it for a lot of people and we also did it for our own empowering beliefs going forward because right before I came out for the immersion, I thought about that. I thought about Coach Slezak. I thought about those moments on the field and I thought about all the times that I had to face my fears and I thought about the times I didn't and what it cost me and I thought about the times I did and what it gave me. So that's what we're talking about today. Love, speed, math, integrity, connection, empathy, all of it in one acceleration for doing good, adding more value, having more more what, more money, more time, more magic. Fernando, we have anybody out there you want to give final, final? Um, we do have uh, Dr. Gamble as we reach our final five. So we, uh, Chaz, if you'd like to tag her in yeah. to share uh, briefly on her experience on her Real Raw Open. And as that happens, I will share final, final. Um, is that I'm loving the communication in the group. You know, thank you to Phyllis. Thank you to Dimple. Thank you to Jay. Thank you to Rich. Thank you to Donna. Thank you to Teresa uh, for truly taking it to another level. And Garrett Ryan, if you can please share your contact info, Garrett Ryan, share your contact info in the chat. Um, we do have some people that are looking for it. And what I will end with is this, um, you know, thank you to all of you for believing. Uh, I know that we move fast here and we truly care uh, about what you're up to in the world. Uh, so what we're committing to is um, we're looking to strategically, um, it's, it's a, not a high number, it's a number, of complimentary coaching sessions as we look for 
vertical partners to truly merge with. And what that means is um, doing consistent real raw opens in integrity with agreement and service of you, your business first, unblinded fourth and fourth and fifth. And uh, if you're one of those people, uh, please contact Garrett and Ryan. Um, they will speak with you. If you know things make sense, we will set up that complimentary session and we'd love to find those partners. And I'm very confident that they're here and they're in our movement. So Sean, we have Dr. Gamble here. Um, so Michelle, I've heard beautiful things. Uh, what is present for you and how was your experience on the Real Raw Open? What is present for me is that love and community are the only solutions to everything that we're facing at this time. Uh, the theme of our ecosystem is it takes a village. And Sean, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing with us this mastery formula. This is what I have been waiting for for decades. And I couldn't understand it and I couldn't put it together by myself, but this is what makes sense and this is what resonates with our spirit and our ecosystem, as you saw yesterday, we are committed to helping each other rise. We are committed to being that wave that allows all of our boats to rise. And I thank you for blessing us with the mastery of Unblinded. Dr. Gamble, um, thank you, received. And you are a blessing. And I became present to, I have been present to the reality of systemic racism my entire life. I've been on athletic teams and heard people use the N-word. Um, and it isn't and wasn't something that was shockingly unique. It wasn't omnipresent, but it wasn't like shockingly unique. I've heard people discuss emphatically um, the dynamics and I, I honor and, and I'm so thankful to police officers and the risk they take and I have them in my family. And I've heard the most absolute clarity on the established systemic bias that exists in how um, our police departments function and think and act. You know, I've had friends tell me stories of their first week on the job and what they were being taught by their superiors and supervisors of differentiating between how they treated white and black people. Like, and this wasn't an anomaly. I mean, these are just systemic, consistent stories I've heard relate to me for my entire life. So when we think of issues of we, they, like that's as soon as the problem starts, whatever the grouping is of we, they, I mean, it's gonna happen. You know, talking to strangers of Malcolm Gladwell speaks into the issues of other and we, they. Okay. So I don't know how to solve all that, but I do know it begins with talking about it. I do know it begins with people coming from their heart. And I felt as a white male in the middle of what is occurring in our nation of like being truly present to systemic bias resulting in murders. I felt such um, unique confusion on my part for how to even show up on that real raw open as we were like in it and progressing. Um, because I can't even begin to imagine the experiences of Dr. Gamble and the people that were on that real raw. And what I was present to was love. I was present to a desire for positive symbiotic change. And that is simply what all people want. All people want, and then you go, well, not every person. No, not every person. But I think even the people who are engaged in the most meaningful cries for help, 99.99% of that 0.00001% of society are still motivated from a place of actual love or a place to like deal with their pain. That is legitimate because it's their pain. And that wasn't like a code for anything. It was a code for all things. And we realize even the most heinous acts societally are also just cries for help and have empathy for them, but realize we need to deal with it. Like we need to deal with it like then we're making progress. 
and on the most like practical today level, um, we need leaders of all forms here. We need leaders of every different profession. We need diversity in um, religious beliefs or beliefs, faith beliefs. We need diversity in um, color. We need to be present to the reality that even within color, there's differentiation amongst what we would perceive to be a group. You know, um, my ex-wife was Latina and she made me present to the differentiation um, among Latinos of different nationalities and personalities and bias that exists there. So we need to be present to the elimination of otherness everywhere it exists. But the place that most easily exists immediately is skin color and gender, because those are the two most readily visible things. So, you know, yes, there's bias between Irish and Italians that still probably exists. And it was systemic in our society, but that was a lot, it's a lot less easy to see. <laughs> so we can't not deal with the, the most present and obvious, just throwing it all away with, hey, there's bias, we, we have to deal with all bias. Yeah, we do, but there's ones that are much more systemic and heinous and present. So Dr. Gamble, thank you. I look forward to um, your leadership, your words, I thank um, Donna for her leadership and words in this space as well. And anything final, final from you? The final, final for us is it takes a village. Thank you. Well, thank you. let us be that village. Have a beautiful day and trajectory Tuesday. Thank you.